Hey, let's talk about batteries and PCBs. This video is sponsored by PCB Way, where you can order all your printed circuit board creations. Okay, a bit of background here for those of you who don't know. These right here are ES200G batteries. These came out of a fleet, a giant fleet, somewhere like 10,000 scooter uh, fleet that was decommissioned. And these batteries were uh, then saved, put into pallets, and then eventually we bought them, right? But the problem with these are that these are have proprietary stuff like the connectors are weird and when you connect stuff to them they are on but they turn off and we have to figure out how to wake them up now someone in the forums and the internet uh was bright enough to figure out what the commands are and uh then they published those and as a result we were able to develop a little product like this one this we call these dongles and all it is is a Arduino board that will spit out the code that is required to wake these batteries up. And you can connect them in here into the uh, cables. We found the connectors up in China and we order a bunch of them and that's how you do. Now with this connected in here, now the battery uh, can wake up and stay on. And this allows you to then use this battery for whatever you want, an e-bike, scooter or a big power wall and so this is a dongle but then today we're going to talk about designing this dongle this is the regular dongle this is the mega low dongle because <laughs> it's so much bigger uh and what this allows you to do is connect around 10 up to 10 of these batteries into a single board like this and then have uh, an output connector plugged in here and then you can power all kinds of things with 10 of these. These are about half a kilowatt hour each. So you put 10 of them, uh, you're talking about five kilowatt hours, around five kilowatt hours of battery, which is very powerful. You can power your entire house. You can use it as backup. You can do a bunch of things with these batteries. It becomes a, a really big, uh, compelling battery. So let's get into how to design this and which parts you will need and where to order them. The connectors first. This connector is the output connector of the uh, battery pack, right? So this is the input connector into this board. The smaller one here is the charging connector, right? So this would be uh, the input. And those are two different, different circuits in the battery. So that's why we separated them. And if you really look closely in the board here, there's three traces right three tracks in here uh and they're separated as they have a common uh positive uh rail and so that's the reason why the, the, the middle one is a positive and they are fused each one of these battery packs are fused with a 20 amp uh fuse out here just in case anything goes wrong if you happen to you know short it out then these fuses will go off before the internal fuses of the packs will go by the way the the the, the packs are fused at 40 amps and in inside so it would this will blow a long time before and then there's also a bms that will turn itself off at 25 amps right but before any of that happened this fuse here will blow to try to save all that uh and the positive rail and then this negative here is for charging right and then we have uh, pads here where you can put the the charging uh pigtail right and you can choose these uh came the ones that we built we built a small number of these and we offered them and we made a video last week showing you how to plug this into the wall and it's really simple once you have this done right but then what happened is that we made a small number and those are all gone so now what you have to do is you have to order all of these and then make them and so here you have a choice to put whatever cables i mean up to 10 gauge uh, american wire gauge into these holes right uh the net the pot negative and then the positive and then you charge through that and you can put whatever connector you want and then these bigger holes here are to put the discharge uh connector right and you can put up to like a four gauge i want to say maybe a six gauge or a four gauge uh all american wire gauge cable in here and that's to remove the 
the power out of here, right? And I'd say, you know, this, I wouldn't go much higher than like 100 amps, maybe 150 amps. But at that point then these traces started getting hot, right? And so I wouldn't go past 150 amps on this board. The traces are, are thick, right? And they're wide and they're running on both sides. So they can carry quite a bit of power, but they do start getting hot after like about 100 amps, right? So I wouldn't run them more than that. Uh, the other things of notice here is that this is where you will mount your uh, DC to DC. This is a little a power supply that makes the 42 volts that go into this uh, power strip, right? And then lowers it to 3.3 volts uh, to power the Arduino. This right here is the Arduino and it has a code that will be linked uh, on the product page uh, and in the, the parts list, right? So this is just a regular Arduino. I think this is called a nano or a micro. Mm, this is a nano because it's got the USB thing uh, and you plug it in there to program it, right? And then let's talk about this thing right here. So this square right here is to put this. This is a Hall effect sensor or a half of a transformer, right? Essentially it's just a, that's just a winding that goes in here and you put it in there and then you pass the two, uh, what would that be? The positive, negative. The positive wires, the charging and discharging. And so this basically keeps track on this screen. This is a meter. It will, it will, you can set this screen to your final battery size and you set your minimum and maximum with uh, voltage and capacity things and there's a bunch of settings that you can set in here this part right here is the the electronics and it has a radio in here so you can uh work this is actually a wi-fi or bluetooth i don't remember if wi-fi or bluetooth but this actually is wireless so you don't have to keep this connected uh there's a usb cable that connects from here to there but that's just to power it you can get this power in here from any other power supply and here's a little radio Right, and so these, this is wireless and you can put this somewhere else and then you can have your battery there. And then this board right here that has my picture, and I don't ask me why I put my picture in there. I just, you know, just on a whim, just tried something new and put it in there. This is to hold that. And usually, uh, hey, where is that? Actually, I, I didn't make it on this one. This is an early version of this board, but the one that uh, I'm gonna link here for the file has two extra holes in here. What allows you to do is position this here and then allows you to mount that, this unit here and then screw that in there. So as you can see here, there are holes in here so that you can put the screws, but that's what that is, right? Now let's look at the, how this looks on the uh, software to make the PCB. All right, this is one of many free softwares available on the internet. I'll put a, a list to a bunch of free ones. You can just use them to design a board like this, right? And then you can use it, uh, that file that you make at the end, you export it out as a Gerber file, and then that Gerber file, then you order through a PCB uh, shop, like uh, the sponsor of this video, a PCB way, right? And so here we go. You basically uh, start a new PCB. See these right here? You can move them around however it's just as easy as that. You pick all the, the uh, parameters of that stuff in there. But yeah, basically let's start with a new one, right? So you go file, new PCB. This is how usually I start, right? And then here, uh, it, it applies some some uh, preset things, right? So there you go. That, take off the grid because then it just gets bits a little bit messy, right? So then what you do is you start applying stuff from the, uh, well, in this case, right? What happens is that I've already, like, like this connector, for example, I went and looked for it, found it, and then all I do is like, if I want to put it in this PCB, then I just copy it and paste, all right? And there's like a connector there. Let's look at the, uh, oh, let's look at the branding, right? So let's say that I wanted to make sure that this is sponsored by PCB Way. 
or you wanted to add some text, right? So then you come in here. Oh, look at that. Boom. So then you add your text uh, and then you pick which, which uh, layer you want that text to go uh, or some of the parts, right? Uh, with that design, you can add a bunch of things. You can look at the 3D version of it, right? So here's a 3D version to see, you can measure things. Uh, you can connecting pads, right? So let's say that you got this guy and then you wanted to add another one of these connectors. And then you wanna add a pad and connect this pin to that pin, you know, let's see. And you want it to come this way or whatever. There's, that's one way to, to do it. And then you wanna connect this other, right? Oh, so what you do is you change to another layer, right? So the bottom layer now can come in here. Boom, there we go. And when you look at this, for example, there's the one pin on the top of the board, but then the other pin is on the bottom, right? And so those will not short out. And uh, then, you know, even though they're they're crossing there, but one was on one side of the board, one to the other. So this is, you just have to learn some of the basics of PCBs and basically you can make your own PCBs and you can order them a PCB way. So there you go. That is how you can design your own board. This board right here, I already designed it. I will share the Gerber file, which is the final file that you will need. You submit that to the PCB shop of your choice. Uh, and then, well, you get these parts and then you order all the other connectors and all the components that it takes to make this. And then you can make this board uh, and this dongle, megalo dongle, so that you can connect all your batteries. Now, if you wanna see how to connect those batteries and stuff, then I made a video, I will link it on the bottom here. I will make an, a future video showing you how to set up the meter. All right, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one, bye. All right, so there we go. We just added all the batteries there, 21 batteries, about 10 kilowatt hours, and that's what all the connections there look like. Um, yeah, now we have two ports, the discharging port and the charging port. And each one of these batteries have the dedicated charging plug in here. And so now they'll wake up for the very first time when you plug them in here, they'll just wake up and then charge, they'll stop. Right, the full BMS will work because you're charging them to the right port and then um, the full BMS will work when you're discharging them. And then this will measure your state of charge here. So this is 100%, uh, you know, programmable. You can program in your entire your capacity and the voltage and if there's even stuff so you can put uh, relays and stuff in here so that you can tell it if it goes over a certain amount of power to trigger stuff or to goes uh, above us uh, thresholds of uh, capacity, then you could also do it, right? So this is a full programmable uh, meter there. But there you go. This is essentially what this power wall would look like.